With one antenna installed, Dan has taken a massive step towards extraction. Now it's time to return to Dixie and get that second antenna in place. Okay, so Dan is leaving Rosewood once again, but he's probably sure that this time it is forever. He does not expect to come back to Rosewood again. If he does, then something has gone badly wrong. He's got another long road trip off to Dixie, but first he's gonna actually stop at the Moldra rail yard because there is an army vehicle that he wants to uh, exchange for this beaten up truck. Well, Dan has barely made it up the road and as usual, he is distracted. It is as a risk. You can see that there are zombies pouring into the area from all directions as so that truck pulling that trailer is loud. But there's, that's the thing that he's risking his life for, the fire axe. He's only got two functioning fire axes. He's actually gone through them in no time at all. You know, I mean, the guy's killed 2,600 zombies. Uh, so he really needs to stock up on his melee weapons, especially as the next stop after Dixie is going to be uh, Louisville and the hospital where the third journal is. But for now, he's actually got quite a fight on his hands. So to make things a little bit easier, Dana has uh, downed a, a chill pill and it's time to get swinging. Hopefully Dan can get some home runs. There we go. And there we go. That is beautiful timing. Another level up, this time in long blow. But the zombies just keep coming. Oof, man, that was close. Yeah, this is actually getting a little bit out of control right now. Is that the zombie? Where's the zombie? If that zombie wasn't here, this one, we probably could have grabbed that fire axe. But for now, Dan's got a little bit of a fight. Maybe he should try and draw this group off rather than trying to kill every single one. Let's do that. Let's draw this group off into the into the field here and then run back. Okay, now, is this going to be far enough? Has he left any zombies behind? Can he grab the fire axe? Can he remember where the fire axe actually was? That is not going to be good if he's got to waste time looking for it. There it is. Yeah, I think we got this. We've got this. Let's grab this, get this in the backpack and get the hell out of here. Okay. Mission complete. Oh no, <laughs> we're about to get surrounded. Oh wow. That was unlucky the way they all came from the front. Oof. Man, I thought, uh, I thought there was some sort of injury to Dan then, but I think that was the zombie going down. Oh, that was close than I would have liked. We are. It has been another long day on the road for Dan, but that is the reason why he's made this pit stop at the rail yard. And it's not come a moment too soon because Dan took the bend just way too quick going past March Ridge to come onto the from one uh, main road to the other. And he went head first, well, the truck did, not him, of course, into uh, a lamppost. So this, this truck is just now feeling looking even more knackered but he wants to get rid of that truck and the trailer combo he doesn't feel that is going to be secure for him if he gets into a tight spot he's going to be really difficult for him to reverse but look at that 655 carry capacity and this thing is probably an absolute beast when it comes to getting through hordes and hordes of zombies so Let's hotwire this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Let's transfer all of the gear, all of the gas. And uh, this is one hell of a vehicle upgrade. Okay, well, it has taken Dan four hours or so, several hours to transfer all of his gear. Now, one of the reasons why it's taken so long is he's pretty much bought everything with him. Everything. Everything. I and mean, there's a lot of food guns ammo weapons and where he's going he's gonna need them but for now he's gonna spend the first time in his new vehicle in his cab trying to get some sleep okay it is the next morning six o'clock bright and early 
Wow, that was quite a sound. It's not going to be the quietest vehicle, but it's kind of almost literally a tank. And Dan has got a big, big day ahead of him. He has got uh, to decide which way or is the right way to go. But he's going north towards Dixie. Uh, and then, and then assuming he can get the antenna put in place, and then he's got to turn his attention finally to Louisville. It's not the best to start. Going the wrong way. But fortunately, Dan didn't go too far before he decided to check the map just to make sure. It's this way. Okay, well, Dan is having to take a different route. Man, this feels like just like an ambush. Uh, he's having to take a different route to get to Dixie because, well, the idea was uh, that it would, uh, the roads would be a little bit clear because the last time he went to Dixie, he took the back roads and he came up across a lot trees and bushes all on the road and he had to stop and take a walk in and this army truck is absolutely massive so he's trying to stay to sort of more main roads more established routes but this is a problem this is a problem okay well there's nothing for it just gonna have to cut down a couple of these trees and hope that that makes enough room for dan to squeeze by in well it's effectively his monster truck let's hope this noise doesn't attract any big hordes from the forest okay, i think that should be enough it's time to get back on the road wow this has not gotten a plan this is really slowing down down it turns out that this road here is just as sort of overgrown as the one that dan was trying to avoid well in fact it turns out this is actually even worse than the, the road that dan was trying to avoid this is painfully slow. Okay, finally, on the map, that was just a tiny, tiny little bit of road, and I thought it would be fine, that dirt track, but it's really, really taken a lot of hours out of the day. Dan is massively behind schedule already. And also, it doesn't help if Dan keeps going the wrong way. Okay, so Dan's come out back on the main highway between Mulder and Dixie. Uh, this is new territory, so it could be a lot of zombies, especially with this really noisy army truck. Just up ahead is Dixie and uh, all of the sort of wrecks that are in the road. So let's hope he can maneuver his way through. Okay, here we are. This is dangerous, potentially. Dan could quite easily get stuck here, like this. I think he's just going to make it through. Uh, looks like we're going to have enough room to get up the side. Okay, so here we are. We are back at Dixie and wow. The zombies have really filled in the area again. There's a lot of zombies coming this way. This is going to be a massive challenge. But Dan's got no choice. Okay, so Dan's not messing around. He's going straight in with the fire axe. Hopefully he can make short work of it. Just like that. Okay, well, here comes the next wave. Oh man, I just hope Dan does not get overwhelmed. They are coming in thick and fast. I think Dan's got the skills, but has he got the stamina? Oh, well, I guess the answer to that question is a resounding yes. That's a good couple of dozen zombies quickly and easily taken care of. Hey, well, this uh, mission to get the second antenna installed in Dixie is a little bit more complicated than you might think because Dan doesn't quite actually have enough gear to assemble the antenna. He needs five uh, metal bars and at least two metal sheets. Now he's got two propane tanks and he's got a couple of torches and, of course, the welding ice. So what he's going to have to take some time doing is disassembling some of the nearby wrecks that are just up ahead to the east and hope that he doesn't have to dismantle too many uh, to get the uh, parts that he needs. Okay, well, it seems the burnt out wrecks are a little bit further away than Dan thought they were. So he's going to have quite a bit of work here just to fight his way where it needs to be. He needs to make it clear if he's taking a long time dismantling burnt out wrecks with his propane torch he does not want to be surprised from behind because then it is all game over so he needs to just make sure the area is pretty much completely clear 
uh, of zombies before he looks to get those parts that he needs. Okay, Dan has uh, run all the way back to his truck and he's actually quite far away. Uh, and he thought he'd just dive in here into the diner, fill up his camping canteen. And he's looking at these fridges and these metal containers. Maybe, maybe if he's really lucky, if he can disassemble these, you'll get the metal bars and the metal sheets that he needs. Okay, so to begin with, he's just going to actually disassemble one of these 50s style metal stools. See what sort of gear he gets from that. Hmm, yeah, I guess he's unlikely to get metal bars. I'm pretty confident that he's going to get metal sheets uh, from these freezers. Uh, but I can't quite see where he's going to get metal bars from, but it's worth a try. Hey, well, that actually went almost perfectly. He's got two metal sheets. I think he needs just one more, but he needs to somehow find five metal bars. Okay, so again, I can't really see uh, them getting metal bars. Ooh. Metal pipes. It's metal bars we need, not metal pipes. Okay, well, of course, rather predictably, the thing that Dan needs is the thing that he's not getting. A couple of metal pipes. We've already got those, so I guess we're going to have to try and go up the highway. See if we can come across any wrecks. Okay, well this is proving to be a lot more tricky than Dan was expecting. Uh, the way ahead is kind of blocked with vehicles. So he's going to have to go in on foot. But it's already getting late, it's getting dark, he's getting tired. He's running out of time. He's got nowhere near the amount achieved that he was uh, expecting today. But that will cheer him up a bit. And of course, there's always another zombie. Let's grab these boxes of shotgun shells. I think Dan's got about 20 boxes of shells now. And let's just eat all of this food straight away. Okay, well, this this is a little bit of a problem. Uh, clearly not the uh, several zombies that are coming this way. But there doesn't seem to be any car wrecks here at all. Or no burned wrecks that Dan could maybe disassemble. It's possible that maybe there's one or two that are just totaled out and Dan can disassemble. But he can't see any. So at the moment, doesn't know where he's going to find the, the metal bars that he needs. It is getting really, really dark now and down. Oh, wow. Man, Dan almost turned face first right into that zombie. And yeah, Dan is getting tired. And now he's exerted. At the moment, his priority now is finding somewhere safe to sleep. Yeah, well, Dan's decided that hopefully, at least anyway, the safest place uh, near that's nearby is going to be the Dixie Trailer Park. And he's actually started to get really, really tired. So you can see, even with his favoured specialist weapon, the hand axe, which is now just broken in a perfect bit of timing. Uh, but that tightness, oh no, oh no, oh my god, that was close. That tightness is really, really making him vulnerable. It's taking a lot more hits to take down the zombies. And of course, now it's raining, and there's the other weapon gone. Once again, the fire axe comes through. But Dan, let's just get another hand axe equipped. Now we've got a, another hunting knife equipped. We've got another tricky situation here. Dan is really tired. Okay, well, this is a little bit dicey because it is really dark, so it's difficult for Dan to see around. But he's he has looked around and he can't see any more zombies. If he can just get in here out of sight and then hopefully he can get some sleep and we can go again the next day. Okay, so we're in. No zombies inside. Doesn't sound like we've been seen. But you can see, this is dicey. There's just nothing but a thin pane of glass. Can't see any zombies. But this is risky, but it's going to have to do. Wow, that is early. Man, Dan really is. Oh, wow, what is that? An M1 steel helmet. Wow, Dan really is a light sleeper. He does not need much sleep at all now. Is it possible 
uh, disassembling ovens and maybe even sinks or showers because we've got showers and toilets maybe that will yield uh, some of the parts that Dan needs and if so if he's lucky he can then just move from trailer to trailer okay well disassembling the deluxe shower did not yield anything at all and now Dan has run out of uh, propane to his propane torch so He's up and at him before dawn. He's going to have to work back to his truck and refill his propane torch. Okay, well, this is actually a little bit more promising. This trailer, even though it looks a lot smaller, it does actually have a bath and a zombie or two. Uh, so he might actually, he's quite hopeful. He's a little bit more optimistic now. Hopefully he will get some uh, metal bars is what he needs. Hopefully he will get something from disassembling uh, that bath and if that's the case it's just a matter of finding a few more okay this is getting to be really really problematic let's just grab those and uh, now we don't need metal pipes we need metal bars where are we going to find metal bars man what a there is quite a storm rolling in dan has checked his map and see if there's any sort of nearby warehouse spaces he was thinking he's just going to have to go into Moldra. There's a big warehouse by the looks of the map just on the northern outskirts, but it's risky. There could be a lot of zombies there. So he's noticed around the rail yard, there's actually a couple of buildings we didn't actually investigate before. He still needs to find five metal pipes. So he needs a lot of luck, but it's worth trying. Okay, well Dan is trying to take a shortcut and yeah it is just too overgrown and he can't even see the road things are just not going his way at the moment okay, well, it's getting really problematic with such heavy rain with such a storm uh, to go those narrow back routes Dan can't see the road basically so he's gonna risk it he's gonna if he can has to retreat he has to retreat but he's gonna tried just to sneak into the outskirts of Muldra and uh, check out the warehouse there okay well Dan has got a growing bad feeling about this the closer he gets into Muldra the more zombies he seems to find the storm is easing off a little bit there are less and less uh, it's more and more visible but that's, that's, that's a lot of zombies I'm not sure if Dan should even get out of his van. Should he risk it? Okay, well, there's the warehouse. He's done a little bit of a circle, which maybe isn't a good idea because he's basically attracted every single zombie around. Man, there are a lot of zombies. He's not sure what to do right now. Okay, well, this could go bad really quickly, but Dan's going to try something new. He's going to try... Uh, I don't know, this is good. He's thinking about attracting the zombies and leading them off. But, yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like he's attracting even more zombies. But he's committed now. He's committed. He's going to try it. going to try and lead the zombies away from the warehouse. i got a feeling it might have the opposite effect, though. Yeah, there's just absolutely hundreds of zombies pouring in from well, just everywhere wow yeah that was a really bad idea okay well Dan's just gonna have to try and take those narrow back roads man there's so many zombies narrow back roads to the rail yard and hope that he can find the metal bars that he needs well the storm is finally eased off the visibility is increased greatly and Dan can actually see where he's going so hopefully you would get to the rail yard without too much trouble. Okay, well, the storm has completely gone and it has given way to a bright sunny day. Can Dan actually disassemble those security fences? The back of the rail yard once again, still on the hunt for those five metal bars. We can. We can. Now, wouldn't it be brilliant if we get a couple of metal bars i would expect to get metal bars and metal pipes from these positions but i did not know uh, that you could disassemble these okay well absolutely nothing 
from that first one. Or the second one. Let's try a third one. Oh, come on. Just for luck, let's try a fourth. Just doesn't feel like anything's going Dan's way at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. We've just wasted a load of propane, which we don't have a lot of, and which we need to assemble a second antenna if we're ever going to assemble that second antenna. Let's find those, well, that's a big group. Let's find those last few uh, workhouses and hope that they've got the gear that Dan desperately needs. Okay, well, this is a new area for Dan. He did not come this far north into the rail yard when he was here before. So, of course, we got a nice little welcoming party. Now, Dan has had enough. He's had enough. Everything is just sort of working against him. Ooh, man, that was close. So he's just going with the fire axe. He wants to make this quick. He wants to finish today with that antenna finally assembled. Okay, well, this is not looking good on, on the map. Dan had not marked this off as somewhere he'd been, but those electrical parts on the floor is a real telltale giveaway. Well, Dan's getting pretty desperate. He's going to disassemble these metal wall shelves, see if he gets anything useful. Just a small metal sheet. Just kind of feels like Dan is running out of options here. Okay, finally. Finally, Dan's got a little bit of a break. Now, that is encouraging. Uh, he's disassembled one of these large metal shelves and he's managed to get, as you just saw, a metal bar. One down, four to go. Okay, so Dan's got his uh, antenna gear double bag and he's done a check. He's, uh, he needs, well, now he needs four more metal bars. Uh, you saw he got another metal bar from that large metal shelf. So hopefully, if he can get a metal bar every time, he just needs to find just four more of these. Okay, well, Dan found another couple of large metal shelves on the top floor. It only yielded one metal bar, but that's another metal bar close. So he just needs uh, three now. So it should just be a matter of searching the buildings once again, finding enough large metal shelves to disassemble, and that will give him the metal bars that he needs. Well, that makes a nice change, a nice bit of luck for Dan there, a hand axe, a speciality weapon, that is a really valuable find. Finally, finally, Dan has got all of the metal bars that he needs. He finally got two metal bars on that last shelf, finally caught a break. You can hear the storm is with a vengeance. It is half past 10 in the evening. It is dark. The storm is making it even tougher to see what the hell is going on. Dan was desperate to get that antenna uh, up and running uh, today. But it'd be a fool's errand to try and do that now. He's going to sleep here and then he's going to go back once again. Hopefully third time lucky back to the Dixie trailer park to get that second antenna installed. Okay, well it is the next day. You would not believe it looking at the light. There's just, it's just another crazy, crazy storm. But Dan is once again back at the Dixie mobile home park. Now, maybe, is it fourth time lucky? I don't know, Dan has actually lost count. He will actually be able to set up the second antenna putting him another step closer to getting out, being extracted of Knox County. But first, he's just going to give a quick tour around, make sure it is clear of zombies, because he's going to be carrying a lot of heavy gear, and he is vulnerable while he assembles it. It does take a while, but does not want to be crept upon. So, it's time to clear the area of zombies. Okay, well, let's have a look around. This is this group of four zombies, but oh my God, it is getting darker and darker and darker he's gonna need a torch soon he's not gonna be able to see this is insane absolutely crazy yeah well that's got some crazy thunder and lightning and the rain again is almost horizontal dan is double bagging it in primary second he's got all the antenna gear he's just gonna actually just check on the map and make sure that this is the right space but we're almost there now 
Okay, so here we go. We got all the gear. It took a long time. It took a lot longer than Dan was expecting. But there we are. That is the second radio antenna finally assembled and in place. Now, there is no way to activate it at this point, but it is in place. That is another massive step post. Let's get out of this rain. But the next thing that Dan needs to do is he needs to obtain that third journal. Once he's got all three journals and the military walkie-talkie, uh, he can actually finally then activate the antennas. Uh, and then all he's got to do is somehow arrange the extraction from the top of the Grand Ohio Mall. Okay, well there is absolutely no way that Dan is going anywhere in that storm. Uh, hopefully he's safe and secure here. The area is pretty much clear of zombies. But next up, it's Louisville. It's Louisville. It's Louisville. It's going to be a massive challenge, but somewhere in the huge, huge St. Peregrine Hospital on the southern end of Louisville, there is just one small little journal, journal number three, and it is something that Dan just, he just, well, he literally can't live without it because he needs it to get out of this place to arrange extraction. It is going to be an absolutely massive challenge. Honestly, I do not know how Dan is going to do it. That's going to be Zombie Central. If you want to find out what Dan is going to do, what his plan is, how he's going to try and take on Louisville and the hospital, all to find one little journal in that huge, massive building. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the next episode is out. If you haven't already, sub, like, and comment. But that is all for today. Another massive step in the right direction. Two antennas installed. Now... It's Louisville. Peace.